Hi, I'm Greg Dell here with attorneys Rachel Alters and Cesar Gavidia. And we've been getting a lot of calls from Hartford about the Hartford Disability Insurance Company. And some questions came up on the uh, question and answer section of our website, which basically was, is Hartford a company that pays disability claims? And, you know, that's a, obviously they do pay. Right. They, I mean, they pay yeah. claims, but really that, you know, the, the question also comes in the form, is Hartford a good company? And so I want to talk about it from a claims handling, if it's an appeal, if it's an application, if it's a denial, and go through some different scenarios of what we're seeing currently with Hartford, and then, you know, provide some general tips for people who are watching our videos about things they can do within their Hartford claim. So I'll start with you, Rachel, from the get-go when someone calls you and they'd be like, hey, I have a Hartford claim and, you know, they recently denied my claim. What's it going to be like dealing with them? Well, when Hartford denies a claim, I mean, that means that obviously they're not paying the long-term disability benefits anymore. Either they had a peer review of your medical records and their doctors disagreed with your treating doctors that you aren't disabled, or their typical followed you with surveillance and caught you doing th things that allegedly you claimed that you couldn't do, um, and they're going to cut you off. And at that point, you're going to need to appeal the denial. And they give you 180 days to appeal it. Um, and you're going to have to get the help from your physician as well as, you know, possibly the best thing would be to hire an attorney to help you with the appeal process. So what what's your take, though, when, when it is Hartford versus, say, the handful of other companies that are out there and, you know, you've reviewed hundreds if not thousands of Hartford denials. And there's some companies where you feel like, wow, this is going to be really impossible. And other companies say, yeah, I, I think I can help you. Where, where, where does Hartford feel, fall on that, that scale of from impossible to deal with to okay to deal with? In my experience, I find Hartford to be okay to deal with in an appeals process. I, um, I do tend to win a great percentage of the appeals that I file with the Hartford, and you can get them to overturn the decisions. You just have to provide them with a very um, complete and uh, appeal and you're, you're going to have to work with the, the doctors and make sure the medical records are so complete that it, it's very supportive of the, this person's inability to work. So I have had a lot of luck with working with Hartford and getting the appeals overturned. But I think that without a lawyer, um, I think the layperson is going to have a harder time winning an appeal. Caesar, touch on that since we've segued into kind of like the appeals and, and how a lawyer gets involved. and goes through the claim file. What goes on in this, uh, this appeal stage that's different from what the claimant initially did on their own that allows them to have this second chance to be able to now, you know, Hartford, you first said I'm not disabled, but guess what? Right. Through, we think you can win your appeal. What do you do to get someone to that stage? Well, you know, like Rachel touched on, um, I think the way that, that we approach appeals um, I, just based on, on our training as lawyers is very methodically. I mean, our, our appeals look essentially like legal briefs to the federal courts. We, we put a great deal of, of time into them. We, put, we ensure that um, there's a substantial and overwhelmingly, overwhelming amount of evidence supporting the arguments that we're making in, in, our, in our appeals. Um, but the other thing is that there may be things outside of just your medical records that we need to seek out. When we review the, the claim file from, from Hartford or when we review your medical records, we understand that you're disabled. We understand that you're not able to, to work. It doesn't always necessarily mean that the medical records that you have support it. It doesn't always mean that the insurance company has done an out, an, uh, you know, unconscionable thing and by denying you, your claim may just need more support, may need more evidence to cross that threshold to an approval. So we may need to send you to a functional capacity exam. We may need to have one of our own experts or consultants um, engage with you and engage in the appeals process in order to get that, that extra thing, extra piece of evidence, extra piece of support that we need to get your claim approved and get your appeal overturned. Um, Rachel, when, when dealing with Hartford, and we'll, we'll even back up to the application stage, every company has their own 
protocols and um, I guess I call it protocols or systems that they follow. How would you describe Hartford's system that they follow in the application process for someone who wants to know if they're going to be able to collect benefits from Hartford? Well, as far as what Hartford requires in order to get approved? Yeah. Well, in the application process, in, you know, the, you start out with, you know, first and foremost, at least when I look at a claimant's claim to, see, to give an opinion as to whether I think they're going to get approved, it starts with the medical records, really, and you need to look at them carefully and make sure that your doctors, all the treating doctors, whether it's one doctor who's a primary care or a specialist, is documenting in such a way that it is supportive of your inability to work. And I think that Hartford really does focus specifically on these medical records because you can't just get a letter from your doctor stating, hey, I think this, you know, my patient is sick, can't work. Okay, why is that not good enough? It's not good enough because they want to see a history of continu a continuum of care. And they want to see that as of, you know, going back whether it's three months ago or even going back as far as six months or a year, that if you have a condition that number one, it's being treated properly by the proper specialist. They also want to see that the condition has progressed over time, meaning you know that you haven't gotten better, that you're actually getting worse, your symptoms are getting worse, and that there's your doctor's documenting restrictions and limitations in the record stating that patient came in today in severe pain, having difficult time sitting for long periods of time, um, you know, it, having severe fatigue, whatever the issue may be, it needs to be documented correctly in the medical records and can't just be, oh, I saw this doctor one time, the doctor wrote a letter putting me out of work and Hartford's going to just approve the claim. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. That's why I think the medical records are really important and it's important that a claimant treats on a regular basis with a doctor and has conversations with the doctor asking them to please document in such a way. Caesar, wh why is it in, in many claims you, you, someone calls you, they say, look, I had two or three doctors, they filled out their forms that they wanted, they documented my medical records, sent them in the Hartford, and from what I understand, their in-house doctor or nurse looked at the file and says that I can work. They never examined me, they never called me, n you know, no one's seen me, they didn't speak to any of my doctors, and they're telling me they don't want to pay me or they denied me. How, it, that doesn't seem logical to me, yet we see yeah. that every day. Why? Does that happen? Well, the insurance companies are insulated, in, especially in this employee benefit setting, in these ERISA cases. Um, the simple answer to that is they don't have to. They don't have to have you examined by their own doctor. They don't have to reach out to your doctors, have a conversation with them, a sincere conversation with them about your limitations, restrictions. Um, you know, just having a discussion with them to try to see what could be done um, to, uh, you know, better document the records. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that with your doctors. They're not going to do that with you um, because they just simply don't have to. So it's your job and your, your advocate's job to be your own advocates, to put all of this together, unfortunately. Most people's experiences with insurance is, you know, they go to their doctor, their doctor diagnoses them with something, they give them a prescription, they submit it to their insurance company, and the insurance company pays the, the, the prescription. But that's not how disability insurance works. You have these critical steps and this proof of loss requirement that you have to meet in order to be eligible. So you have to, you have to basically build up all of this evidence to be able to prove that you're not capable of working or engaging in your occupation to qualify you for these monthly benefits. And it's not just meeting that threshold once. It's continuously meeting that threshold. Rachel had said a continuum of, of treatment. It's a constant you know, requirement to prove your claim as often and as frequently as the insurance company desires it. So oh, Rachel, talking about is Hartford a good company, you know, if three or four doctors have seen your client and, and you submit the medical records and all the forms, why isn't that enough? Why is Hartford going to a nurse or an in-house doctor? Why can't the person that is sending the letters and saying, send us a claim, review that and make a decision? I mean, the truth of the matter is Hartford looks for any reason whatsoever to deny the claim. So Hartford is hiring their nurses, their peer review doctors to look for reasons to deny a claim and not pay benefits. And if they can find that reason, they're finding it. So what they do is they, you know, they have a peer review doctor who says, I don't care that this claimant has seen four or five 
doctors, whether they're specialists or they work, you know, in Harvard Medical Center, they don't care. They say, I, you know, I don't agree that this person is un unable to work. I don't, I don't share the same opinions as the treating physicians, which you would think would be completely unfair as these peer review doctors and nurses haven't even examined or met or even talked to the claimant. So Hartford is allowed to do this, unfortunately, because the federal courts and laws allow them to hire peer review physicians to render opinions when they don't even treat, see or treat the patients or even have them examined. And their opinions can trump the opinions of four or five different treating doctors who have actually seen the patient over a period of years. I mean, it's just the way the law is written, and unfortunately, they hire these people just to find reasons. So like Caesar touched on, they'll have their peer review doctors maybe call the treating physician and, and ask them about the care. But in the conversations, at least from my experience, they are, you know, leading them with questions to try and, you know, get the doctors to say, hey, don't you think this person can work? So, you know, it sounds like you're saying the attitude is more as what's missing, not what's there. Exactly. Right. Which is, which is sad, but along those same lines in, in, in Hartford, and this is something more specific to Hartford, is their, their level of surveillance um, and their field interviews are, are second to none in the industry, in, in my opinion. Um, they are notorious. Well, Caesar, you talk about the, the, um, the process of you get that call and what's going on when the, you know Hartford person wants to come to their home? What's usually happened already that you can oh, explain? They, they without a doubt have done conducted surveillance on you. They've hired out to these private investigators that have sat outside your house for three or four days uh, taping your every movement. You know, whether you've gone to the grocery store, how many times you've gone to the grocery store, how long you've spent out and about, how, what you're doing in and around you know, your front yard or within the scope of what they can see. You know, so uh, they do that because then once they come to your home and they sit down with you and they start asking you all these questions in this interrogation style setting um, and they ask you, um, are you able to do any gardening? And you say, well, uh, you know, you think to yourself, that's an odd question. I was just gardening last week or I went and I was in my front yard or I keep a nice garden. They must have seen, you know, there, there's those assumptions being made. Um, it's because they've seen it most likely. Right. You know, they've seen something to already lead them into this this question, you know, so and there's been times where we've actually seen surveillance where they didn't even surveil the correct person. Right. It's 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 not even the claimant and they're engaged in activity that certainly doesn't appear to be, dis you know, the activities of a disabled person. And they and they deny the claim on the basis of this bad of this bad information. Right. So, well, when they do the interviews and, and then on top of, you know, the surveillance, the person comes and tries to talk to them for two or three hours of which we help people all the time to, to deal with those. The bottom line is you got to tell the truth in those and you can right. get through yeah. whatever it is. Just assume they know everything and just admit what it is. The worst case scenario is trying to talk your way out of it and then have something on video that shows you doing something different. If you did it, you did it. It doesn't mean you can go work 40 hours a week. Right. It's not, it's not a big deal. The other topic with Hartford, you know, when we talk about qualifying for benefits is their change of definition. It's in almost every single policy. It's more often than not that it doesn't stay inability to do your own occupation. It switches to any gainful occupation and usually it's, um, it's something in the national economy, whatever that particular job is. And it might be with due regard to what you used to earn, maybe 60% of what you used to earn. But in anticipation of that, if it's a 24 month definition, usually at about the 18 month mark, they send out this 10 page, at least 10 page questionnaire. And how important is that? And, and what are they looking for in that, Rachel, when, that, when a claimant gets that? Right. It's extremely important because what they're doing is they'll send out this questionnaire and it usually comes with a cover letter saying, you know, your definition of disability is going to be changing as of such and such a date. Therefore, we want to find out, you know, information on what your hobbies are, what you're able to do. Are you able to travel? Do you drive? They want to know basically everything you do on a daily basis, um, what your education and training background is. And what they're trying to do is, is determine they're going to send your claim to a, a vocational specialist who's going to pick three or four jobs in the national economy that they believe that you can handle um, and that will pay you either 60 or 80 percent of your predisability income, whatever the policy requires. So what they do is they find these jobs and they ask you in the questionnaire, they ask you anything you can possibly do. And they go, OK, well, we think that you can sit at a desk 40 hours a week and and 
you can you can be a you know a manager or you can be um, some sort of you know sedentary position that will pay you 60% of your job and we're going to now deny your benefits because we don't think you qualify under the any occupation definition under under the policy so the, it's really important when you fill out these forms that you're you're doing it with the help of an, an attorney who knows what they're looking for and they're trying to trick you into saying that you can do certain things and that you're educated to perform certain jobs and once you put all that in writing and you hand that to them, they use it against you. So, I mean, I think the bottom line from, and we're just scratching the surface with yeah. Hartford, and I would suggest. And we should also say Aetna, because now it's one company, right. both Aetna and, and Hartford, and, and you'll see Hartford well, denials because, on Aetna. Because they acquired, Aetna, policies, they acquired right. Aetna a couple, right. uh, a couple years um, uh, back. But uh, bottom line is being prepared. But, but even more so being prepared, a person who is not in the business, who hasn't reviewed thousands of Hartford claims, doesn't know what it means to be prepared because they don't know. It's like going up to battle. You don't know the enemy, whereas we know the enemy. We know what they want. So you can put yourself in a better you know, position by really being prepared and trying to avoid the things that can happen, which is why we do all these videos and offer our services to get people through applying or through an appeal and then if you lose all that, going through a lawsuit to try to get a judge to say, hey, these people didn't act reasonably, reverse the decision and award my benefits. So I encourage people to watch our other videos, but most importantly, no matter what stage your claim is at, give us a call. We're gonna offer you a free initial consultation, whether it's sending us your policy, a copy of your denial letter, whatever stage you're at, we will review it. We'll, we'll let you know right away whether or not we can help you. Our lawyers are available all over the country. Whenever you call us, you're always gonna get a lawyer to answer your call, which is something unique from our law firm. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're regularly putting out these videos and we hope that you find them helpful in your future claim with Hartford.